This year is off to a good start for the stock market. There are signs that things are getting better, especially in the industries that were hit the hardest in 2022. Even so, there is still a lot of economic uncertainty. In its ongoing fight against inflation, the Federal Reserve has more work to do. In the meantime, worries about geopolitics continue to pose a significant risk to the markets. Here are 10 dividend stocks to buy right now. Number 10. BP PLC BP is one of Europe's big energy companies that does a lot of things. Since the early 1900s, the company has been a major player in the oil and gas business. In the past few years, BP has been one of the companies that have moved the fastest to change its business model toward energy sources that produce less carbon. But the people in charge seem to have some doubts about that. A recent article in the Wall Street Journal said that BP is going to put less money into green energy. Investors may like this move because it will allow the company to give more cash back to the people who already own shares. In turn, this is good news for people who buy dividends. BP just said that it will raise its dividend by 10% and is also buying back a lot of shares right now. Also, BP's shares are selling for only 6 times future earnings, which makes them a good buy. Number 9. Verizon Communications Incorporated Verizon is one of the three main wireless carriers in the United States. Investors in income have known for a long time that telecom companies will give steady, reliable performance. But Verizon and AT&T Incorporated have both let down investors in the past few years. After its bid to buy Time Warner fell through, AT&T cut its dividend. After a big jump in demand during the pandemic, the telecom industry as a whole has seen its growth slow down. Meanwhile, operating costs stay high because rolling out 5G is expensive and buying wireless spectrum is expensive. At this point though, the mood may be too bad. Even when the economy is bad, people will still pay for things they need, like phone service. Verizon shares, on the other hand, sell for about 8.5 times their expected earnings in the next year and have a great yield. Number 8. Toronto Dominion Bank One of the biggest banks in Canada is the Toronto Dominion Bank. It does a lot of business in both retail banking and investment banking, and it also has a big presence in the U.S. Canadian banks have done better than most other developed country banks in the past because there isn't as much competition there and the rules are easier to follow. Even though the industry has done well over the long term, Canadian banking shares lost favor in 2022. People were worried that the housing market would fall. Since 15 years ago, bears have been saying that Canada's housing market will crash in a big way. They might be right one of these years, but investors have usually done well by sticking with Canadian banks. And TD in particular does well because it has a lot of different types of business and is spread out over many places. Number 7. International Business Machines Corp. IBM didn't look like one of the best dividend stocks to buy for a long time. After all, newer software and cloud companies were doing very well while IBM seemed to be falling behind, but the tides turned in 2022. Even though most tech stocks fell sharply last year, IBM was one of the few that did well. Why has the way people feel changed? For one thing, IBM sales have gone up again after years of going down. The risky purchase of Red Hat has given the company's cloud business new life. At the same time, investors are now putting more emphasis on companies with strong profits and cash flow instead of putting more emphasis on companies that will grow in the future. Even though IBM's growth isn't too fast, it meets the needs of investors who care more about how profitable it is right now. The stock could go up if IBM can keep taking market share from larger cloud computing companies. Number 6. Citigroup Incorporated. Citigroup is one of the largest banks in the United States. It has operations in investment banking, retail banking, and a large international presence. Over the years, the company has had its share of problems, such as operational mistakes and some strategic mistakes. Investors may have punished Citigroup too much for its bad reputation. The price of a share is about 7.6 times its future earnings, but it only sells for 55% of its book value. The sharp rise in interest rates is good for Citigroup's retail banking operations because it will help them make more money. Also, in 2022, Warren Buffett's company, Berkshire Hathaway Incorporated, put a lot of money into Citigroup shares. Since Buffett has a good reputation when it comes to banking stocks, other investors might want to do what he does. Number 5. U.S. Bank Corp. U.S. Bank Corp. is another big bank in the U.S. that focuses on retail banking for consumers. In the past, this has been an advantage that has helped U.S. Bank Corp. make more money than average. But over the past 10 years, U.S. Bank Corp. hasn't done as well as it could have. When interest rates were close to zero, its retail-focused banking did not do as well. But now that interest rates are going up, things should look much better for U.S. Bank Corp. in the future.
This is especially true since it just finished buying Union Bank for Mitsubishi UFJ Financial Group Incorporated, which it did in December. This makes the bank's reach bigger on the West Coast, which is a good market. The bank should do better in the future because its branch network is growing and its lending margins are going up. Number 4. Amgen Incorporated Amgen is a big biotech company with a wide range of drugs approved by the Food and Drug Administration. The company is focused on treatments for cancer, inflammatory issues, and renal disease, among other conditions. Some of Amgen's best-selling products are getting close to the end of their patent protection period, which is a problem. However, the company has been able to deal with this by buying new products. Its purchase of Onyx Pharmaceuticals added to Amgen's oncology products, and the deal it plans to make with Horizon Therapeutics PLC should make it a stronger player in immune system products. Amgen's shares fell from more than $290 in November to $240.20 at the end of trading on February 8th. With this drop, shares are now selling for just 12.3 times earnings for the next year, but they still pay a good dividend. Number 3. Digital Realty Trust Incorporated Digital Realty Trust is a real estate investment trust, or REIT, that focuses on data centers and communications equipment. Over the years, companies have had a lot more data to store, which has helped digital realty grow a lot. Some big tech companies have built their own data centers instead of outsourcing to a third-party owner like Digital Realty. This is a risk for the company. Investors are more worried about Digital Realty and other owners of data centers because of this and the rise in interest rates. But that may already be priced into Digital Realty shares since they have dropped by about a third from their all-time high. At this price, the company has a good yield and should see a rise in its share price when people start to feel better about data centers again. Number 2. Avalon Bay Communities Incorporated Avalon Bay Communities is a REIT that focuses on apartment buildings. The company runs more than 82,000 units and is working on building another 5,000. Avalon Bay has focused on high-quality markets like New York, California, and Washington, D.C. Even though rent prices can change a lot from one place to another, Avalon Bay's focus on markets with high incomes should make operations more stable. In recent years, Avalon Bay's income has gone up a lot because rent has gone up a lot in many markets. Even so, Avalon Bay's stock has dropped a lot over the past year as investors worried about rising interest rates and a falling housing market. Those are real worries, but it's not likely that rent prices will go down too much, especially since demographics keep showing that the U.S. has a shortage of housing units in many markets. Number 1. Realty Income Corporation Realty income is well known among people who invest in dividends. The company was smart and called itself the monthly dividend company. For more than 25 years in a row, the dividend has gone up every year. That makes the company a good buy and shows how stable it is in the sometimes unstable world of commercial real estate. Realty income is stable because it is a triple net lease operator, which means that its tenants pay for more important costs like utilities. The recent rise in inflation makes this contractual protection even more important for realty income. Higher interest rates and a possible drop in demand for retail real estate could make investors nervous. But because realty income has done well in the past, investors should give it a chance. What do you think of our video? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from me again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go. Thanks for watching.